So first of all, uh, you'll be able to see my screen hopefully, uh, and this will, this is the Power BI homepage, and you access it by simply typing in app.powerbi.com, signing in with your um, Microsoft account, and that will take you to the uh, landing page, which is usually the the sort of dashboards that you've accessed uh, most recently. So just a quick overview. Um, so you can you get this place called Workspaces. Now Workspaces is a way of uh, splitting uh, departments and work areas within the business. So for example, we have uh, one of our consultants here, Matt, has his own workspace in which he has certain um, members there. And this is another demo workspace in, in which uh, another set of people could have access to. And we can essentially go into here uh, and add certain people's email addresses in here, make them an admin uh, or just a normal user, um, and then they have access to that area. So this is a way of sort of securing um, uh, reports and dashboards from from uh, peers within the within the sort of company. Okay. So underneath uh, the demo workspace that we're going to access, we've got a few reports here. And I'm going to go into, um, let's start with the visual home safety dashboard. So we spoke about this briefly on the call and I was uh, uh, going through this whilst, um, whilst we was talking. So just go to the home page for this. So this is uh, quite a new homepage or a new style of dashboard that I've put together recently. Um, so you would come in here for example, so this would be our home safety checks, how many home safety checks we've carried out in this given time, date time request, uh, requested date here, so we can change that and amend that and, and, and play with that. We can see how many checks are done, how many contact, so you generally there's um, uh, this uh, an SLA, so we need to sort of meet a certain number within seven days. So 87% were contacted within seven days, and this is a sort of breakdown of those. Then we have 80% that were completed within 28 days after the initial seven day contact, and then we have a completion, and then that follows on down here, and this is a breakdown of that. And then they all they're all categorised within this risk status here, so we can see that we've got a small amount that were very high, and then some that were very low, no risk, etc. Okay, this is our uh, home safety checks over the time, so we can essentially select our low and then see what the low was, and we can sort of see the highest was around 300, you know, over in um, November 2013. And then if you go to the medium, we can see these are more lower, so they're more around the 100 marks. And then if we go to the very high, these are in the under the 15 number of okay and then over here we've got uh, again we've got the risk status and then we've got the percentage of revisits and as you can see over here something that's quite concerning only 0.3 percent of, of uh, those with high or very high risks are revisited so that's something that, of a concern to to me as a, as a business owner so I want I want to know why that's that's so low because essentially if there's a high risk building or high risk um, uh, home, then we need to be sort of going back and looking at that. Now, this could be something quite simply as a breakdown in process, a breakdown in uh, communication somewhere, and this prompts us to go ahead and, and, and fix that uh, wherever that inefficiency is within the business. For example, here we can go, I've created a link here under the home safety checks, and I can go in and drill into that a bit more and, and have a look at a bit more detail. So this takes us onto another page here, gives us a breakdown of our risk level status again. Uh, again, so we've got 546 uh, very high home safety checks carried out, 32% were followed up, and then only 4% were revisited. Now again, uh, as, as mentioned, this could be uh, a breakdown in process or people aren't logging things properly or not unlogging things in the right place or not being sort of proactive in putting data back in so essentially this is something that we need to sort of uh, look at within the business and, and try and improve now as you can see here this graph shows us that yes uh, the percentage of follow-ups is increasing which it should as, as the sort of uh, status is increased um, but as you can see, the, the, the percentage of revisits is, it doesn't really go as high as it should. It should be sort of way up here, and this should be more around the 90 to 100% rather than the 30%. Okay.
Uh, and again, we can sort of uh, click around and we can sort of filter the data so we can filter down to the bottom level and go to look at exactly what particular house this was, which su su supply it was, uh, what the result was, etc. When the date came in, when the first contacted date was, etc. Who the name was, what the risk level was and what the job number is. And then we can also apply a link to this uh, particular job role and then take that to our um, management system that houses all the uh, the home safety information as well. Okay. So as we go on, uh, another example of a report. So this is a more of a we were looking the the idea behind this was um, to have a central. Um, uh, area for KPIs and and everything surrounding it makes up those those sort of KPIs. So the 287 uh, home safety checks that were carried out, they're broken down into days to contact here. Uh, they're, they're broken down into supply and over here. They're broken down in days to contact and days to complete, uh, and also give you give us a, a sort of um, a heat map uh, by day to day. So if we look at the the risk status and the, and the day to day, we can sort of instantly see you know where the sort of main culprits are uh, and how many safety checks are carried out uh, in a day. So if we click on this, for example, this nine here, we can see the nine were carried out uh, within the three days, uh, supplied by these descriptions over here, uh, carried completed within fourteen days. Okay, and the reason so many were carried out because they were no risk and we were able to sort of get through quite a lot of home safety checks in that day okay again just a breakdown of uh, risk statuses and, and the data table as well just to uh, look at the uh, bottom line of, of information as well okay and if we move on onto the risk detail this is uh, this was redesigned. Uh, we already saw a sort of version of this earlier on, so uh, this was a report that I redesigned uh, into the newer format. This is the Freedom of Information um, report. So this takes data from an online source um, that people submit information. They want in, uh, information on on finance and spending, um, and we can look at we can look at that information. How often that comes in? How long it takes us to respond to those, how long it takes us to complete. We can see that our cutoff is usually 20 days, but uh, in average it's taking us a bit longer to do that. Our slowest response over here is 46 days. Um, and we can go through down at the bottom here, have a look at which items those were. Uh, again, we can go down to governance and we can see um, the percentages that get completed within 20 days, the average days to complete, um, you know, how many requests we've got under that area at the moment. And we can also see sort of big spikes here. So we can see that there was a big spike in June for some reason. And what we can do with that, if we do see a big spike in, we can we can organize staff members to sort of, uh, you know, come in, work extra hours, arrange to, to get those sort of requests out on, on time uh, and within our SLAs that we have. So this gives them a, an opportunity to sort of look at what they have in their pipeline and what we can sort of do to uh, assist in making life easier. Again, this is uh, this is a complaints dashboard. So as well as uh, information requests, we do get complaints, and of course we can uh, organise those by types of complaints, um, by tasks, how they how they go in, whether they. Um, have been dealt with or whether they're still in progress um, and how sort of quickly they get dealt with uh, depending on maybe their uh, their area or what type of complaint it is and we can sort of use the drop down over here to look at operational and non-operational um, complaints uh, again we can sort of fill that down to the different types of days brackets uh, and have a look at all, all the information on there uh, and fill that down to the individual records as well. Okay. The final one in this set is an ICT uh, report. So again, uh, this looks at the service records for, for for your IT department. So the requests that are sent into them, my keyboard's not working, my so and so is not working, uh, I can't access my email, etc. So these are all sort of number of records that go in. So as you can see, we had a, a big spike here. There must have been a system failure in which 2,000 people just said, right, my computer's not working, but that was able to sort of pick it up. Uh, and we can look at the SLA of the, the 
uh, service team as well, so that's 99%. And again, we can sort of pick up on, on the ones that were missed, uh, drill down to those and, and have a look at what sort of area these were. So we can see uh, this is a P for area P4, uh, when that was responded to and how often those sort of happen. Uh, and then we can sort of take measurements against those types of um, uh, service requests and, and make those uh, uh, you know, ensure that we sort of hit those targets in the future and, and not miss them. Okay, so that's one style of what. So again, that 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 was around sort of performance management reporting. Now, if we go to our HR showcase. So whereas that was more around performance management and looking after the processes and efficiency of the business and how that's running, um, this is more on the analysis of our staff at the moment and what sort of staff we, we sort of have in the company at the moment. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, this is a, a new style of dashboard that we've done here. Uh, we've got uh, 902 current employees and this is where they're all based. So we have a number of consultants, uh, especially up in the north. We have a few in the north and some down south, but generally most of them in the, in the Midlands. Um, we've got our breakdown of employee by ethnicity. We've got our start of the levers in the past 12 months. Okay, we've got our job classification and years of service scatter graph to see if there's any sort of anomalies we can sort of pick up on there, any sort of trends. We again got our active employees by years of service, so how long do our staff members generally stay with us before sort of moving on? And as you can see, we sort of got uh, only a few that have been here for, for 16 to 20 years, but if we do sort of click on that um, and this graph down here uh, filters all that out. And then again, if we look at the ones that have been high here less than a year, I think that would be gives us a better idea. And then you can see sort of how it sort of filters that down as well. Okay. And again, that filters a graph and gives us an idea of where we we are taking sort of staff members on from. Uh, and with that, we've got a, a number of KPIs um, on the page as well. So the number of starters within the sort of uh, last twelve months. Um, the number of levers uh, in the past 12 months as well, our sickness rate um, for employees and our staff turnover rate as well for, for employees as well. Okay, uh, and again we've got a, a drill through report so we can go and look at our sickness report in a bit more detail. So the, the sickness uh, is a bit quite, is quite high so we wouldn't mind going in and have a look in a bit more detail where that's happening. So this is our sickness report. We can see our total sickness days, uh, average yearly sick days per person, um, where if there's any sort of uh, pandemic happening, we can sort of see uh, in certain areas. So let's say, for example, this April seems to be a, a big spike over here. You know, is, is that sort of uh, refined to a particular area? Uh, we can look at sort of the ethnicities and things over here. Uh, if we look Asian, Asian, Pakistani, um, Afghan, so generally it could be that there was a, a need festival that month and people had to take off, uh, you know, take a sick for those days, uh, potentially. But this again, you know, we could use this to sort of uh, improve processes within business and say, look, you know, if you do have festivals, if you do have things coming up, let's put them in, let's get them in there early uh, and then they can be cancelled if, if it changes days because it is it's quite difficult to, to sort of um, you know uh, for example the Eid festivals they land on different days every year so um, if we can help uh, employees reduce that sickness rate or, or uh, stop them from taking a day off uh, you know unknowingly then that's it's better for everyone all around but even though there's a, a high spike there if you look at the average rate over here the average is high over in December so again Going into Christmas, uh, it could be people taking more sick days over Christmas because it's the Christmas holidays and uh, you know they don't get enough time to do other things or whether because it's cold weather, you know people do get quite um, uh, sick over the, the winter period. So again, that could be uh, generally uh, generally uh, sick at that sort of time. Um, again, you can look at sort of uh, sick days by pay basis. So is it people that are paid hourly? Is it people that are paid annually that teams take time off uh, or sick days and then we can have a look at the breakdown of those so are they on the road and we can see um, what sort of days they've taken off during the year as well okay and what sort of job classification etc and whether they're in a, a certain area as well 
Okay, so it just gives us a bit more analysis on, on sickness and where it's happening, why it's happening, and gives us an opportunity to try and uh, improve that within the business. Moving on to our levers forecast, so as you noticed on the first homepage, we had 300 odd levers um, in, in the last sort of 12 months. So this gives us uh, a forecast of how many levers we're expecting in the coming year. Um, so as you can see at the moment, 2016, 321, but if we move on, we're expecting a forecast of 355 based on our previous information. And now we can use uh, these graphs down here to filter these. So if we look at uh, male consultants, you know, how we expecting to leave in the coming months. Um, instead of that, we can look at Red Hill. Is it that people, we, we see a reduction in leavers in Red Hill, but we still need to probably hire people over there. Um, we can look at particular sectors and do we expect people in particular sectors to be leaving? Um, we forecasted 14 to, to leave in finance. So again, this uh, gives us uh, an idea um, of budgeting for for um, uh, employment. You know, maybe we need to improve uh, processes again. Uh, do we need to provide more training to people? If people are leaving within, uh, you know, the first couple of years, as you can see by this active employees, we, we see that we've got a large number that only last a year or two. So it could be that we need to provide them more training. We need to give them uh, more support within the first couple of years to to, 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 to take that through to the, the additional years that, that come forth. Um, so again, it gives you uh, an option to go back and um, uh, try and improve the business processes uh, and improve the quality of life for the, for the, for the staff. Okay, so that was our HR report. Um, I'm going to quickly go over to the what if analysis uh, report that we have. So this, for example, is uh, showing us the average daily toll revenue on the M6. Okay. So number one is the percentage of cars we expect to use a toll lane. So the the participation, the toll we want to charge for each car, which is the value, uh, the hours during which the tolls are being charged, which is is this here. Okay, so what we can do is is say that okay, um, we have only twenty percent participation. Okay, and those are between the hours of uh, six and ten. Okay, so as you can see that by the graph here, this is the total number of people. This is the people using the toll and um, because we're not charging uh, we haven't got a big window we're going to charge £5.50 per vehicle and that gives us this amount of revenue but let's say for example if we increase this toll hours to to that that word and let's increase our participants to 30% okay but then let's reduce that and only charge £3 per person or per vehicle how does that affect our? So you can see we've got a little bit more revenue there. We go down a little bit more. We can still hit that five pound fifty value uh, just by increasing the toll hours, um, which essentially will give us a bit more participation because people will often pay a bit less, even though um, uh, just to get through that that that, um, that traffic a bit quicker. So this is a way of sort of using. Um, you know, disconnected parameters to sort of um, look at how we can uh, change uh, the end goal with, with certain parameters. Um, changing, you know, we could deploy a certain number of people to a certain area and how will that affect the sort of uh, bottom line uh, going forward. So it gives us an option to sort of play around with, with, with values here, uh, making sure we can get uh, to the right sort of end goal. Okay, um, hope that was okay. Um, if you need anything else, of course, just get in touch. Uh, I'm sure our team will be happy to help. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.